Hello, everyone, and welcome to Europeans at Heart, a podcast created and hosted by young European ambassadors in the European Union. Your hosts today are Mafalda and Vahe, YAs from Portugal and the Czech Republic. Through today's episode, we will take a deep dive into the next country of the Eastern Partnership in our podcast program, namely Armenia. We are very excited to be hosting two of our Armenian colleagues and fellow YEAs in the studio today, Nelly and Mariam, who will tell us more about their beautiful country, from rich culture and history to EU-Armenia relations and the country's political scene. We can't wait. But before we begin, let's review a few facts about Armenia. So the country is located in the South Caucasus at the crossroads between Europe and Asia. Today nestled in the easternmost corner of the wider Armenian highlands, the country is bordered by Georgia to the north, Turkey to the west, Azerbaijan to the south and east, as well as Iran to the south. Approximately 3 million people live in Armenia, about one third of whom live in its capital Yerevan. Yerevan is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world and is known as the Pink City, as many of its buildings are built from a local pink-toned volcanic rock called Tuf. Armenia is the only country in the Eurasian Economic Union that has a bespoke social, political and economic agreement with the EU, the Comprehensive and Enhanced Partnership Agreement or CEPA. The CEPA was signed in 2017 and came into effect this year as of March 2021. The CEPA aims to advance and deepen relations between the EU and Armenia across political, economic, trade, social, environmental and good governance sectors, amongst others as well as bring Armenian laws and regulations gradually closer to the EU acquis. And now, without further ado, let's welcome our guests, Mariam and Nelly. Thank you so much, Vahen Mafalda, for this really beautiful introduction about Armenia. It was very nice to hear some facts about Armenia from you. It is a pleasure to be here and thank you for having us today. As you already mentioned, I'm Mariam, Young European Ambassador from Armenia, and it has already been three years since I have been a part of this very important initiative for me. My background is in linguistics. I have graduated Russian Armenian Slavonic University. I hold PhD in the theory of language and cross cultural communication. I also specialize in tourism and I work as a tour guide, helping people to discover their piece of Armenia and the overall Armenian culture. Now, if you don't mind, I'll pass the word on to Nelly. Hi, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm Nelly Abrahamian, Young European Ambassador from Armenia. I'm a PhD student at Yerevan State University in the field of Genocide Studies. I also work in the same department at Yerevan State University as a research assistant. I'm also actively involved in different volunteering activities, such as EU for Youth Alumni Network and many, many more. Thank you one more time. Thank you for your beautiful introductions, Mariam and Nelly. Indeed, it is lovely to have you with us. So our questions for today will be structured as follows. First, we will discuss some unique characteristics pertaining to Armenia and your relationship with your homeland. We will then move on to talk about the Armenian culture scene with Mariam, including Armenian music, dance and art. Thereafter, we shall delve into Armenian history and politics with Nelly. And finally, we will ask you some questions on a personal level related to your perceptions of European identity and EU-Armenia relations. So let's kick off with the first question. What do you like the most about your country? I think I would answer this question with an excerpt from the poem by the Armenian writer Yerusha Chadens, which just came to my mind. It says, I love my sweet Armenia's world, which is filled with the taste of sun. I love our gloomy sky, our pure waters, luminous lake, and I love the thousand year stone of the ancient cities as well. Indeed, this poem is in the heart of each Armenian, and to my mind, it expresses the pure and let's say the true love towards our homeland. And I think this is the best answer that can fit to your question because it is sometimes and very often it is difficult to describe with words why or what we like most about our country. Okay, Mariam said everything with the words of Yerusha Charens. If, to be short, hospitality, open-heartedness and the feeling of comfort and warmth. That's great. Thank you so much, especially to Mariam for sharing that poem. Can you tell us what are some unusual things you like about your country? 
I think these unusual things relate more to the cultural aspect, to Armenians' overall perception of the surrounding world. For example, and I think somehow you will be surprised on this, one of the unusual things in Armenia is paying instead of your relatives, friends or even acquaintances on the bus, metro, car, etc. So imagine if there are five or ten friends or acquaintances of yours on the bus, an Armenian, especially boys, will definitely pay for all of them. And if you would ask why, why it is so in Armenia, it will be a little bit hard to find an answer to your question because this is a kind of part of our national behavior. But I think the explanation of doing this is that when you pay instead of someone in Armenia, you show a kind of sign of respect. So this is a kind of respect for us. Another strange yet common thing is a kiss on the cheek and a light hug, which is an ordinary way to greet friends in Armenia. And it does not matter if you saw your friend yesterday, a month ago, or in the morning. So while visiting Armenia, be ready for some tenderness. I can feel the warmth across the continent, Nelly. <laughs> Moving along from unusual things to past times, what is a holiday you only have in your country? This is one of my favorite questions and I was waiting for it. There are many holidays that are typical only to Armenia, and this is due to Armenia's old and rich cultural heritage. But I would highlight a holiday that is a piece of my childhood and which is relatively forgotten for many people. The holiday is called Jangulum. The word gul means a flower. Jangulum is also known as Hambartum, a celebration of love and enjoyment, which takes place outdoors in the month of May. 40 days after Easter, so it is also referred to as Ascension Day. Back in the days during the week of Jangulum, the women went out into the fields and sang songs that held a taste of the countryside. In Armenia, this week of celebration was very important. Mayam just told us one of the most beautiful yet a little bit forgotten holiday in Armenia. So I will tell about another most loved holiday in Armenia, which is Vartavar or Jirotsi. The holiday has very deep roots back to pagan traditions and is related to goddess Astrid, who was a symbol of love, water and purity. Later, it was of course adapted to Christian traditions. In ancient times on that day, Armenians dedicated goddess Astrid roses. And here comes the name, Vartavar. Vart means rose in Armenian and war means rice. Currently, it is celebrated 98 days after Easter. And during this day, it's a common to see people pouring water from balconies in the streets and everywhere. So if you do not want to get wet during that day, better stay at home because Armenians get out there and pour water on anyone. That sounds incredible. I can't wait to visit Armenia and experience some of those traditions. And another thing I would really love to try is, of course, Armenian food. So what's your favorite traditional food and why? Could you describe it in a few words? The Armenian cuisine is so rich that, believe me, it will satisfy the tastes and preferences of anyone. So it's a little bit hard for me to mention only one traditional food because I think that I am a fan of everything in our cuisine. But I guess it will be dolma I would highlight the most simply because it is the very food I imagine when I say Armenia. Dolma is a stuffed vegetable dish wrapped in cabbage leaves or grape leaves. But I mostly like with grape leaves and I would suggest our audience and you to try it with grape leaves. The filling can be rice, minced meat and other spices. So we wrap the leaves around the minced meat and rice and cook it with olive oil. Very simple. We have more than 50 types of traditional torma, so when you are in Armenia you should definitely try it. As far as we have already eaten dolma and it is time for Armenian sweet. Rapama. Rapama is so good that we made a song about it. It is a pumpkin stuffed with rice, dried fruits, nuts and honey. These are the ingredients for traditional Armenian rapama. It is still cooked for New Year, Easter, weddings and even birthdays, birthday parties. People happily serve it to a table by singing Hey Jan Rapama, Hamo Foto Rapama, like it is translated delicious and aromatic rapama inside honey rapama. And there are a lot of legends connected with this dish. It was believed that pumpkin was a symbol of planet Earth, rice was mankind, and dried foods and nuts were people of various faiths and ethnicities. Dolma and Rapama sound delicious. I can't wait to try them when I visit Armenia. Moving on, if you could describe people from your country, what adjectives would you use and why? 
I think I would definitely use the adjective hospitable because Armenians love having guests at their homes as we believe that guest is kind of sent from God and the better to receive him at home, the more happiness and prosperity will return to the owner of the house. At any point in Armenia and regardless of the situation, people are ready to assist someone they meet even without any demand. Another adjective I think I would use would be maybe hot-blooded as we are very quick to express our emotions and when an Armenian speaks the body language prevails. Armenians are also known to be very familial because in Armenia we often say people shouldn't be alone because family is what makes us comfortable. So family is one of our really strongest values and the importance of family is taught to the children from their early childhood. I totally agree with Myriam that the above mentioned adjectives typically describe us in addition to hospitality, Armenians are also very generous people. So while traveling to different towns or regions, it is common thing to be invited to local homes where families share food, fruit or coffee with strangers. So you can get fat by while visiting our country. So before I was mentioning, I want to visit Armenia and get to know more about its, its people and everything you were mentioning. So what places would you suggest visiting first? I would answer this question from the perspective of a tour guide and I would suggest our audience to take their pens and write down the places. So, while thinking where to go first in Armenia, I would definitely suggest to a little bit deflect from the classical directions because in this way you will see the real Armenia with all of its wildness and beauty and hidden magic. So, for example, if you are a fan of mountaineering, Aragats, Arahatis or Khustub can perfectly fit you. Or if you like to experience extreme feelings, you can go rafting in the Bet River, situated in Lori region. Another unforgettable experience can be the caves of Armenia, which are the evidence that Armenia was inhabited since ancient times. One of such places uh, can be Areni Cave or Bird's Cave. By the way, the oldest shoe in the world was found here. You will also be pleasantly surprised by Las Diver Caves in Tavu region, kind of the stormy river, small and large waterfalls, give the place a fantastic view. But of course, the classical directions like Garni Gerhard, Noravank, Lake Sevan, Dilijan, Sanahin, Hachpat, etc. still can be your points of destination, but of course after you had this little deflection. So Armenia is a small country, yet there is so much to see here. Even for me as a local, there are so many unvisited places which are on my bucket list. So if you are an extreme lover, I will surely recommend you to visit Yale Extreme Park for zip planning and not only. It is a place where you can climb over rocks, overcome different obstacles and admire the wonderful nature. So current activities of the park include not only zip line, but also a horseback riding, off-road, climbing and so on. So if you want to combine to visit your Yale Extreme Park visit with some cultural aspect, you can find it on the way. One of the most beautiful monasteries, Matosavank, which is a 13th century monastery hidden in a forested area of Dilijan. And next to it also there is another sacred gem, Juhtakvank, which is a very beautiful one. And uh, these places I explored only last year during quarantine. So this was somehow a benefit for me. All of those places sound amazing. And just thinking about that, we've heard quite a few Armenian words now. What's your favorite word in the Armenian language? Probably it is Tsavatanem. This word is untranslatable expression of endearment. It is from the word Tsav, which means pain, and Tanem, take away. If we try to translate it, let me take your pain away, or I would take away your pain. I guess the word will be Eutun, which is translated as essence, as the nature of something. Generally, each letter in Armenian has its unique interpretation from the symbolic point of view. And the letter E in this case symbolizes kind of infinity, endlessness, immortality. It's like being out of time. So this is the word I would highlight the most. Thank you. That was really interesting. And I challenge our listeners to try to say some of these Armenian words. After listening to all these interesting facts about Armenia, I'm sure that our listeners also want to know more about its culture and art. So what are some unique or classical characteristics of Armenian art? 
Generally, it is difficult to define the Armenian art, you know, in terms of its richness, diversity and cultural production. But to my mind, the main feature that makes Armenian art recognizable is its kind of Christian character prevailing everywhere in manuscripts, hajkars, carvings in the stone, etc. So this is mainly because the Armenian artistic traditions were tied to Christian belief, worship and display. Another classical feature which I noticed in the Armenian art is its vibrancy, visible in every motif. Also, the multicolor nuances make the Armenianness recognizable. And generally, I think that Armenians love colors. We like using them in architecture, in sacred images. The colors help us to express our emotions, yeah, our emotional world, and highlight what is important to us. Indeed, I think Armenian art, of course, is majestic. Thank you, Mariam. Can you tell us a little bit about a few Armenian artists, musicians, and film directors? Armenia has gifted the world with artists prominent all around the world, such as Ivan Ivazovsky, Arshil Gorky, Hakop Bojoyan, Marty Rossarian, Aram Khachaturian, Arno Babajanian, and so on and so forth. But let me tell you a little bit more about Lilith Bipoyan, one of my favorite musicians, as she belongs to that, you know, narrow circle of modern Armenian musicians whose works present an alternative to the traditional folk, classical, spiritual and pop music. Lilith's compositions are based on Armenian poetry and folklore. Bipoyan is especially fond of medieval secular songs for which she creates modern arrangements or new melodies, yes, when the originers are lost. Another prominent musician is Elvina Makarian for me, and indeed when Elvina Makarian sings in Armenian, there is no translation needed. She is a legend in Armenian music, and one cannot imagine Armenian music without her. Tigran Hamasyan, whose talent and works are internationally recognized. However, if our audience does not recognize the name of Tigran Hamasyan, I think this is the right time to discover him for themselves. Another prominent Armenian is Sergei Parajanov, an outstanding film director, so the movies of Sergei Parajanov remain some of the most stylistically unique in the history of the medium and easily place him within the pantheon of the world's great filmmakers. You can start recognizing his art from his films and I would suggest to watch The Color of Palm Grenades, which is uh, about the biography of the Armenian poet Sayat Nova. Moving on from film to music, how would you describe Armenian music to someone who has never heard of it? What are its characteristics? Well, before describing the Armenian music, let me mention that that no matter what touches the hand of an Armenian, whether it is painting, literature or music, everything already has its own special unique Armenian flavor which you can feel. But if I'm the one who should describe it, I would describe the Armenian music as sympathetic, maybe as soft, pure, imposing. To my mind, the presence of soul in Armenian music is always felt. And the main characteristics of Armenian national music are distinguished by a monotone, a single voice structure and a special tonal system. So the Armenian music is modal, let's say. It is based not on octave with major or minor notes, but on an untempered scale. Also, the sound of duduk always prevails and the rhythm, to my mind, is rich. That's definitely another thing I want to learn when I visit Armenia. And also, I would really like to learn more about dances. What are typical Armenian dances like? What are some of their unique motives or characteristics? Do they incorporate traditional costumes, for example? You know, I remembered the saying by Komitas when he was generally speaking about the Armenian national dances. He said that the Armenian dance expresses the typical characteristics of our nation, especially our traditions, our degree of civilization. And I think this is more than true because Armenian national dances denote the character of the Armenian people. Armenian national dances, they originated in ancient times on the territory of Armenian highland. And since then, it has expressed the lifestyle and thinking of the people and their attitude towards life and nature. 
As for the main characteristics of Armenian dances, so the main direction of Armenian folk dance is on the right, but there are also left and backward steps. Most of the Armenian dances are danced by holding hands and moving in a circle in a close row. Generally, the main dancer announces the figure change by a loud voice or by waving the handkerchief. Armenians have more than 35 folk dances, such as Kochari, Shalaho, Yargush, and many more, as well as dances that are typical for certain regions. And you mentioned also about our traditional clothing, and you are more than right, because besides being an inseparable part of people's everyday life, our Armenian national dress Taras is also an important part of national dances. So Taras is a separate culture, and during the dance performances, it serves as a second melody with its significance. We've covered such a vast array of topical questions relating to art, Mariam. I want us to conclude this section of our podcast today that is devoted to culture by inquiring about Gomitas, who you mentioned earlier and who is a highly significant person in Armenian history. Who was he? Why is he celebrated in Armenia? What role did he play in the history and development of Armenian music and the field of ethnomusicology in general? Yes, thank you, Vahed, for your question. I think while speaking about Gomitas, I should start with the words by Vazgen I, the Catholicos of all Armenians, who once said that the Armenian people found and recognized its soul, its spiritual nature, in Gomitas' songs. So Gomitas Vartapet is a beginning, having no end. He will live through the Armenian people, and they must live through him, now and forever. I think these words describe the best his importance in the Armenian history. As for ethnomusicology in general, I should say that Soromon Soromonian was and is the most important Armenian song collector, music researcher, arranger, and his exact and detailed researches established Armenian musicology on a scientific basis. So his own folk-based songs and choruses and his liturgical chants are still popular popular among Armenians and indeed Komitas or also known as Zoromo Zoromonian is the founder of the Armenian national art music. And let me say that the harmony and polyphony as well as the principles yes of texture in Komitas music do not undergo any classification of the commonly accepted musicological definitions. Komitas in short is our identity, our history, our beginning. That's very interesting indeed. Music always plays a fundamental role in raising awareness about social and political issues and it is a huge part of a country's history. So speaking of that, we would now like to know a bit more about Armenian history. What are the key moments in Armenian history? Why are they important or relevant for Europe and the wider neighborhood? Probably I will mention the era of Cilician Armenia, which is one of the key and glorious eras in Armenian history. After the collapse of Bagratuni Armenian Kingdom, Armenians started to settle in Cilicia. Armenians were living there from the times of the Grand the Great, but the main flow started approximately in the 11th century. And this little land was at the crossroads between East and West trade. So Armenian aristocrats joined the Crusaders as trusted friends during the First Crusade, sending troops, supplies, and so on. Also, from the beginning of the 13th century, Levon the Great signed trade agreement with the uh, main republics of Venice, Genova, and later on, Levon granted Venice, Genova, and Pisa traders and merchants special access to Silis and Armenia. These facets of Armenian history are so intriguing for the European neighborhood in general. Thank you for sharing that, Nelly. What facets or facts of Armenian history are you most proud of then? I guess a lot of Armenians and me personally are proud of the era of uh, Tigran the Great. He was the king of Armenians in the first century before Christ and he created a huge empire, the borders of which stretched from Egypt to the Black and Caspian Seas. And that time was called Tsovit Tsovhayastan or C2C Armenia. And it is a still popular expression used by Armenians to refer to the times in which Armenia occupied such a great deal of land. And we cannot talk about Armenian history without mentioning the Armenian genocide. So can you tell us a bit more about it, its causes, course and effects? Because most, if not all, Armenians have a personal family story in relation to the genocide. So if it is all right with you, could you share yours with us? 
The Armenian genocide is the biggest tragedy in our history. And I will probably say it is not only tragedy for our history, but for all humankind. From 1915 to 1923, nearly one and a half million Armenians were systematically annihilated by Ottoman Turks. Also, not only Armenians, but other Christian nations, Greeks, Assyrians. And from 1915 to 1916, the Ottomans killed large numbers of people in mass shootings. Many others died during mass deportation due to starvation, dehydration, disease, and so on. Armenian children were forcibly removed from their families and uh, converted to Islam. The Armenian population of the Ottoman state was reported approximately 2 million and even more. But after the Armenian genocide, the Armenians of Western Armenia disappeared because one part was Islamized and the other part was killed. The word genocide coined by Raphael Lemkin has roots with Armenians. Once Lemkin heard in newspaper that what happened to Armenians was something not just, and he found that it was very important to coin a word which can make a legal protection of groups. Of course, there cannot be one answer what was the main reason of Armenian genocide. It is the combination of number of factors and developments. I think that every Armenian family has a tragic story related to genocide. In my case, I heard about it from my grandma who told me about her grandmother who managed to survive, yet all her family was killed. So there are lots of seem like yet totally different family story tragedies. Thank you for detailing and explaining this sad chapter of Armenian history, Nelly. How has the Armenian genocide impacted the current politics of Armenia? How has it impacted the region? Thank you. I, the recognition of Armenian genocide has become a foreign policy priority and a factor in the international activities of the Third Republic of Armenia. In 1990, when the Supreme Council in Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic adopted the Declaration of Independence, it recorded the demand of the international recognition of the Armenian genocide, which happened in Ottoman Turkey. Before the independence, the Armenian diaspora was the main, let us say, responsible body for the recognition and now there is a bilateral cooperation between state and diaspora. On the 100th anniversary of Armenian genocide, Pan-Armenian Declaration was adopted, which one more time demonstrated the whole civilized world that the just demands of Armenians is going on till now. Of course, the recognition of Armenian genocide impacted the region. Armenia and Turkey have no diplomatic relations up till now, and the Armenian-Turkish border was closed in 1993 on the initiative of the Turkish side. Thank you, Nelly, for sharing such interesting insights about the Armenian genocide and its consequences for today's Armenia. I'm curious to know more about how the current political climate in Armenia looks like, what have been some key changes since independence from the USSR in 91? Where do you see the country headed in the future? In June, extraordinary parliamentary elections took place in our country. This was a try to end the political crisis that erupted after war. The newly selected parliament started to work from this month, from August. The Third Republic of Armenia went through a lot of hard times since the collapse of USSR, earthquake, war, blockade economic crisis and the last year was much more hard for all of us but I do really believe that the bright future of our country and I believe that future is in our hands. Armenia has always gone through some difficult historical situations but it always had the courage to get up on its feet and proved the right of living. What we know for sure is that the future of our country was, is and will be young people, that's us, who care about their country and who are not indifferent towards the future of uh, our homeland. Indeed, Nelly, thank you for those inspiring, intriguing and thought-provoking words. So having covered Armenian art and Armenian politics and history, we now move on to the final portion of our program today, and that is speaking a little bit about EU-Armenia relations and your perceptions, Mariam and Nelly, of the EU and EU programs. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when thinking of the EU? When thinking about the EU, I always remember all for one and one for all saying, because the EU is all about unity and harmony for me. And I think the EU is about a successful story and it is an example of a real partnership. Well, maybe the EU motto comes to my mind, united in diversity. 
That's great. What about your experience with the EU? What is the best experience you've had so far with EU programs? I think the best experience in my case still remains YA's network, as it gives me the opportunity to present my country on international platforms and speak out about the concerns of the youth of my town and, of course, bring the opportunities offered by the EU to my town, to Masis. The best experience for me was the Erasmus Plus three months exchange, which I had in Belgium as a PhD student. This was really a life-changing opportunity for me, which gave me a chance not only traveling Europe, but also change my perspective and point of view on different issues and on different things in life. That sounds so lovely, Nelly. So during your travels, did you ever find out something about the EU that surprised you? I was totally surprised at the culture of coexistence between various states. Even though there are so many differences among 27 states, they are all united with the same aim. And it is a wonderful example how historical rivals are now, let us say, friends or colleagues. Maybe the most surprising moment about the EU that I found was its initial administrative agency of the coal and steel community established by a treaty ratified in 1952 and it was actually designed to integrate the coal and steel industries in Western Europe. So this was quite surprising for me in the history of EU. Yes, thank you for sharing. So what do you think could be done to bring young people from your country and the EU closer to one another? That's a good question. Thank you for raising that. I think for this, we need to get rid of unilateralism, or let's say from this one-sidedness. We need more real-time communication, to my mind. And I think not only young people from Armenia should visit the EU, but also the EU-based young people should come to Armenia, to Eastern Partnership countries. I think this will make the connection closer indeed. I totally agree with Mariam. Of course, it is great for the youngsters from Eastern Partnership countries to travel in Europe. But to my mind, it is necessary for youngsters from EU to have more exchanges in Eastern Partnership countries for mutual better understanding. Thank you. And for the final question of today's program, would you say that you feel European at heart? What do these words mean for you? We're echoing the sentiment of our podcast, which is after all called Europeans at Heart. When I say being European at heart, it means for me sharing, caring and of course believing in unity. Everyone who shares the core values of EU is for sure European at heart. Yes, and we hope to raise awareness about these values through our work as YEAs and of course through our podcasts. Indeed. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe and share it with your European friends. I'm certain that you will continue learning more about the EAP countries with us on this journey. So join us for the next episode coming up very soon. Don't forget to follow us on our Instagram and Facebook at EU Neighbours East or on Twitter at EU Neighbours. And finally, a huge thank you to today's speakers, Maria Menelli. Thank you for sharing so many interesting facts about Armenia and your thoughts about your country's political situation and relations with the EU. Thank you for the very interesting conversation and for this opportunity to represent Armenia. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mariam and Nelly. It was a sincere pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Bye.